I want to uh, bring up an allied question, which is uh, related to the multiverse. So I want to read something to you from uh, a while back in Quantum Magazine, which, uh, which talked about the study of non-Gaussianities. And in mm -hmm. Quantum Magazine, they say, uh, the study of rigorous study of non-Gaussianities took off in 2002, when Wal Maldesena, a revered monk-like theorist at the Institute for Advanced Study, calculated what's known as a gravitational floor, the minimum number of triangles and other shapes that are guaranteed to exist in the sky due to the unavoidable effect of gravity during cosmic inflation. Cosmologists had been struggling to calculate the gravitational floor for more than a decade since it would provide a concrete goal for experimentalists. If the floor is reached and still no triangles are detected, Maldesena explained, then inflation is wrong. So uh, I want to ask you, because I don't, I actually interviewed a real monk last week, and uh, I have to say, you guys have some, somewhat similar, you know, countenances. You're very, uh, very revered and very reserved. Uh, but uh, I don't know if the monk-like attribute is, is accurate. But, but leaving that aside, um, uh, behind me are these balls. I'm going to go get one while you're on the screen. But can you first talk a little bit about what is a non-Gaussianity in the cosmological context? And I'll bring up uh, some visuals for the audience. Well, uh, An interesting fact about the universe is that it's very close to uniform on lo at long distances. But another interesting fact is that it's not perfectly uniform. There were some primordial inhomogeneity. So it was, to first approximation, homogeneous, but with tiny little inhomogeneities that I guess you've uh, been studying for your, your, your career. Uh, and that's a map of the, those inhomogeneities as we see them through the CMB. Um, these inhomogeneities, it's believed that they were produced through quantum effects. They were due to quantum fluctuations during the beginning of inflation. Um, and so they are random. So the quantum fluctuations are random. But in quantum theory, the, um, the, the randomness has some pattern. So, uh, so there are different patterns of randomness. Uh, and so the simplest pattern is so-called Gaussian pattern, where each each region could sort of fluctuate independently of the others, roughly speaking. It's not exactly this, but um, each, let's say, wave fluctuates differently from the others. And th that's like the simplest pattern, the bell curve, the Gaussian distribution. Um, but in, in actual theories, so actual theories are interacting. And the, the fluctuation in one place creates create some decreases or increases another type of fluctuation in a similar region. So um, so you have some non-Gaussian effects. So some non-Gaussian means that there were some interactions between the waves. You could view this as waves or fluctuations in the geometry of the shape of the universe. Um, and the, this, uh, these deviations from Gaussianity gives us very deep information about the interactions that were present during the inflationary times, during the times of inflation when, when these fluctuations were produced. Um, and so the simplest interaction that we had was interaction of gravity. So that if you have a fluctuation that created, created an overdensity, okay, it created some gravitational potential and then some other fluctuation would, would look different. And that's uh, the so-called gravitational floor. So it's the minimum amount of non deviations from Gaussianity that you would need if inflation is correct, uh, at least, or at least single field inflation. Um, but in principle, there could be larger effects due to other particles that could uh, could have existed during that time. In some, some ways, the early inflation is like a particle detector or a particle collider that uh, you, 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 you create all these particles uh, that uh, well, could be created. So, so the universe at the time was expanding rapidly, and there's an effect similar to the effect of Hawking radiation that we discussed before, that creates this uh, quantum effect that creates this uh, these waves, this long these fluctuations, and it could also create other particles uh, which have uh, mass proportional to the effective temperature of these fluctuations, and the um, so if you created those particles, it could also imprint all kinds of interesting patterns uh, in the sky. I mean, so far, so far, no non-Gaussianities were detected. So uh, that is, uh, so it's very, very close to Gaussian, but still there are a couple of orders of magnitude to go to to, to get to this floor somehow, to this minimal amount. And I guess there are very interesting experiments going on trying to, to calculate this 
to measure, I mean, to experimentally measure this non-Gaussianities uh, better. 